What's up YouTube? Maurice here again and I'm bringing you another episode of Trinidad's Finest Fish Keepers and today I'm gonna talk to a fish keeper who is dealing with and into aquaponics. So we're gonna get to see his setup and we're gonna get to see how he does things and um, we're gonna learn. Yeah. Okay guys, this is the aquaponics setup. It's an IBC cut in half, well the top is cut off. Um, in here, we have tilapia, uh, some paku. I know there's a, there it is. There's a clown knife fish in here. And on top here, we have some really nice vegetation. We got watercress, we got some peppers. We got other plants growing in here as well. We got tomato and celery as well. So here with me today to talk about this is Sachin Miraj. Hi Sachin. What's going on YouTube? All right, and Sachin is gonna tell us what went into this setup and how it works. All right, Sachin, tell me what's this? What's all this about? I'm new to this, so I'm gonna pretend I don't know anything about it. Oh, okay. This is the grow bed. Right. Basically, water comes up from the main tank through this pipe here, mm -hmm. and well, it goes through my gravel, well, my media guard. Up here, I have some cloth to remove solid liquid waste. Um, and over here, I have gravel. Right. Now, this is the media that the plants will grow in, mm -hmm. and they'll, the roots will suck up all the nutrients from the fish water. Right. I have celery, parsley, peppers, watercress, lettuce, lots of plants. Lots of plants. I have worms here in this grow bed as well. And basically, this also works as a filter. There's a lot of beneficial bacteria growing here. Mm -hmm. And that will convert my ammonia into nitrites and convert my nitrites into nitrates. And the plants awesome. will into polynitrates. Awesome. And fresh water will go back to the fish below. Awesome. So, this grow bed here is actually filtration for the fish below yes and the fish act as fertilizer. nutrition and fertilizer for the grow bed yes so it's like a complete ecosystem then it is With that's lots of microorganisms growing here that's very awesome okay guys so this here these fish the tilapia and everything else in here they all act as nutrients and fertilizers for the plants now this filtration system is really just a pump pumping water up and across and into the bell siphon right and all the other filtration as you just heard Sachin say will be done by the plants uh, the beneficial bacteria on the stones and then the water will return to the tank via this exit hose at the bottom um, I'm gonna show you guys a cycle a cycle means that the water comes up fills up into the bell siphon fills up the top tray gives the plant water the plants will then um, filter the water and when the water level reaches to about this high to cover the stones that's when the cycle starts and water comes back out You'll see that in a second. Okay guys, and here we have a cycle which is now about to start and you're gonna get to see the cycle as it comes out through here. This is at the bottom of the top half of the IBC. It's all full and it comes right back out. Here's that cycle in full swing guys. Water goes up, goes in, fills up, and then comes back out. And that's a full cycle. All right, so Sachin, tell me a little bit about this setup and how long did it take? How much effort did it take you to get this going? Because this looks like a pretty complex something for the ordinary guy. Well, 
I saw that it set up initially at the very beginning of November. Mm -hmm. We're in January now. Yeah. That's Actually, we're going to be in last February. Month, I think we're in last year, January. Yeah. So, you can see a full three months for for the system to build up on cycle and everything. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it will will be shorter if you put in bigger fish at the start. But I started with very small tilapia, like two centimeters. Mm -hmm. So it took me quite a while to get it going. Fingerlings? Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, it took me about a day to build a setup. I just got a, an angle grinder, cut my um, IBC. I, um, it didn't take long at all, about an hour to do all the plumbing and just a day overnight to let the glue on stuff. All right. Okay, um, great. All right, awesome. So we just went through the setup. We just went through what goes on, what went into it. Now, what I want to know is, what the heck is that? And what's in it? Is there anything in it? Or is it just um, pads to filter out water? And how do you control a cycle? Okay, well, this big cylinder here is basically a gravel guard. Right. Um, this towel on top of it is to build out all of the physical waste. It's to build out all the physical waste. Um, if you could get a camera above it, right. you can see a sponge here. That's also to build out physical waste. Right here is my bell siphon. Awesome. And if you put the camera there, you can see the stand pipe. Pretty cool. I don't know if you guys can see that, but yeah, they can see it. Awesome. Right, so a bell siphon. What the hell is a bell siphon? Basically, this goes above the standpipe as the pump pulls up the grow bed. The water will reach the same level as the standpipe right. and it will begin to trickle inside. Okay, so that starts. No, that doesn't start. No, that, well, it, it does actually, but the bell siphon is key. Okay. Because of this cap on top here, right. it creates a pressure difference. Mm -hmm. and that creates a vacuum okay so the water will go all the way down all the way down all the way down right. until this first slit right here right and then and it'll the start sucking stops. in air yeah oh okay okay i i think i get it so this pipe fills the water up into the gravel guard which is acts like an overflow and it flows and fills up the bed and while the water is filling up in the bed the water goes all the way up to the top here. Yes. This will create the pressure difference and then it'll start coming back down. Yes. It'll start coming back down and while it's coming back down, that starts the cycle. It does. Okay, so the water will then flush out from below. And when it reaches the first And when slit it reaches here, the slit, it, it starts the cycle all over and again. The, yeah. Awesome. And That's just freaking cool. Over and over. A light bulb just went on in my head, people. <laughs> a literal light bulb. So that's just like a filter pad, right? Just it looks to just like a filter pad, just to keep all of the physical waste out the of the physical system. waste out. Okay, so you're sucking up your impurities. And all once right. a week, all you have to do is just take it out and put it in some some water. Awesome, awesome. Otherwise, you never have to do a single water change in the system. Not never much. have to do a water change. Do you guys hear that? That's pretty cool. Um, not much um, maintenance at all, at all, at all. Maybe the only maintenance really is just picking your crops. All right. So just we're going to pick crops. some crops. All right. Thank you, Sachin, for telling me all about mm -hmm. this. Um, let's see what else you got. OK, so Sachin, I am looking at this and I'm wondering, well, why the heck is your water level so low? The reason why I'm asking is because I was looking at Varindra's IBCs and his IBCs are filled all the way up, but he keeps koi. So could you educate me a little bit? Is well, there a reason? Well, since my fish are obviously still small, and the plants depend on the, uh, the waste from the fish, right? we need to have a high concentration of ammonia and waste in this water. So to keep the concentration high, we need to lower the level of the water. Awesome. So the plants, they live off of the ammonia and the nitrites and the nitrates. And um, in order to keep it up, because it, the size of these fish, 
you drop the water level. Yes. So if we had bigger fish, then you would need to increase the water level, or else the um, the amount die. of ammonia will be too much. Oh, okay. Okay. We don't want ammonia spikes, but we want enough ammonia to feed the plants. Okay, I get it. All right. Let's go see something else. I also know that you have flower horns. I do. <laughs> All right. Look at these. Now I know these are flower horns, but as for the type, come here, boys. Good boys. Sachin, what are these? These are red dragon flower, red dragon flower horns. Awesome, red dragons. That's why they they're so intensely colored. Yeah. Awesome. Well, these come like like dogs. I just call them. Uh, now they don't want to come again. Always happens. Wow. So tell me, is this like a pair or these two uh, males? Those or? are two males. Two males. And the reason why they're so aggressive towards each other. Just like pit bulls. <laughs> pit bulls. Two males. Can't be in the same enclosure. Awesome. This one actually jumped over the divider and bit this one all over the head. So they're real wild enough oh. each other right now. So it's a bit of payback. That's yeah. what's going on. Oh, so, so he wants to give him a little bit of licks. Yeah, all that. Wow. This, this is beautiful. These fish are some beautiful fish. But because of their aggression, that's why I don't have any. I had the option of keeping, but I really don't want these guys. Because you got to keep them divided all the time. All right, so thank you, Sachin, for being on my series. Uh, thanks for having me on. All right, so when you guys want to know more about aquaponics and other local fish, claw horns, discuss fish, birds, aquatic predators, everything, oddballs and all, check us out on our local Facebook page, Trinidad Pets and Wildlife, Exotic and Local. Sachin is the creator. I'm an admin. We have other admin as well, but you guys go check it out. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Thanks for watching guys.